Hey everyone! We are back for more about the first chapter. I made a video yesterday, five minute video, that just kind of did a really, really quick basics into writing your first chapter, but there's a lot that goes into the first chapter, so it could not all fit into a five minute video, so I'm back with more. Yay! So one of the things that you want to do when you are starting your first chapter is to start at the beginning. And this tip seems pretty silly because you're like, duh, where else would I start? But you'd be surprised at how many people will actually start their story way before they actually should because it is so tempting to start at these really cool moments that happen that kind of make the story take place or to start at some point in your character's backstory because you think it's just, oh, it's so cool and I can't have this left out. But the, the problem with that is you are going to risk sounding like a bunch of journal entries because it's going to be, you know, here's the main character at five and here's him at 10 and, you know, now we're actually going to get where the story takes place. So you want to make sure that you're not starting way before the story actually starts. But how do you know when your story actually takes place? So to figure this out, you can ask yourself the question, what events take place that actually set the story in motion? So for Harry Potter, that would be when Hagrid shows up and tells Harry that he is a wizard. So you don't actually want to start your story there. You want to back up just a little bit and include all of the events that lead up to that that one event that sets the story in motion, which is the inciting incident. And that is where you will want to start. So it wouldn't be as meaningful if the story began right then when Hagrid came in and told Harry that he's a wizard because we don't understand, you know, everything that Harry went through, why this means so much to him because he's had to live with the Dursleys, he's been really mistreated. And so being special and being part of this world that values him, it really, really means a lot to him. So you don't want to start right at the inciting incident, right at that moment that changes everything and sets the story in motion. You want to back up just enough to give readers kind of like why this is important or what the main character is struggling with right before this happens. If you find yourself 10 chapters away from the inciting incident, it may be that you're, you're starting your story out a little too far back. So try moving your story up forward a little bit. And any kind of backstory or anything that you want to share about the characters that happened before the story, you can always just sprinkle that in throughout, throughout the novel. Make your first line shine. So you want to make your first line really, really pull readers in. Obviously your first chapter is the first thing that readers will read and your first line is the very, very first thing that they will read. So you want to make sure that it is intriguing, that it's something unique, special, exciting, that it asks some kind of question. Um, this is something that is really difficult to put a formula to or anything. It is something that you just have to be creative with. A lot of times you'll write your first line like, tons and tons of times before you get it to the point that you want it to be. I think the best thing to do when you're trying to figure out how to write your first line is to just Google first lines or even just go to your bookshelf, pull out the books that you love and see what the authors did there. And just so you kind of get a sense of the different styles and different kinds of things that you can do to start your novel out. Also, I would say don't sweat it. You are going to write this first line over and over and over again. So if you sit there and all you're thinking about is, I've got to make this line perfect, you are never going to go on and write the rest of the chapter or the rest of the book. Establish a sense of place. So this doesn't just mean to describe where the story takes place or where that first scene takes place, but it also means to establish the, the time in which it takes place or maybe the world if you're writing a fantasy or a science fiction where it's just something on another planet or in another world. So if you're writing a story that takes place in the 1800s, 
you want to make sure in that first chapter and preferably maybe in that first paragraph you mention something about the clothing that is worn or the fact that the streets have carriages on them something that will give the reader a clue that they are no longer in the 21st century and that they have gone back in time and into what time they have gone similarly if you're writing a fantasy you want to make sure you've included something of your your fantasy world so if your world has fire breathing toads make sure you put that in that first scene or at least have the characters mention it so that way automatically readers know you know what I don't think we're in this world anymore set the tone in your first chapter you are going to set the tone for the entire novel so if you're writing a murder mystery you want to have a murder take place in the beginning or if you're writing a romance you want that first chapter to be all about how the character wants to fall in love or maybe how they don't want to fall in love if you're writing something that's going to be lighthearted and funny then you want some comedy to take place in the first chapter whatever you do you don't want that first chapter to be disconnected from the rest of the novel. So if you start out with something funny and lighthearted happening in the first chapter and then the rest of the novel is like a thriller and there's a bunch of scary stuff going on, that's really going to confuse your readers because they are expecting whatever that first chapter is like, that that's how the entire novel will continue to be. The first chapter is also a great place to add some foreshadowing into what's going to happen throughout the rest of the novel or even how the novel is going to end. So it doesn't mean that you want to give anything away about the ending, but it just means you can kind of add something that will give readers a little bit of a clue of something um, about that novel. So it could be something really simple um, in my story. It is about a boy who finds a gemstone, and that doesn't happen in the first chapter. So what I did to kind of foreshadow what the story would be about is I had one of his friends steal a gemstone, and that whole first chapter was kind of about um, what he was going to do with the gemstone, um, and Dallin, the main character, was trying to convince him to give it back and saying that they were going to get in trouble for stealing it. And so it's just a little thing to kind of put in there to just kind of foreshadow what the rest of the story is going to be about. Pretend that you aren't writing the first chapter. So much is writing on this first chapter and there is so much stuff that you have to pack into it that it's easy to get overwhelmed and to be worried that you're never going to get it to be perfect. Guess what? You aren't going to get it to be perfect, at least not right away. You're definitely, it's going to be a mess, okay? So you just have to embrace the fact that it's going to be a mess it's not going to be perfect. You may completely change the way this first chapter is. So what I do whenever I start out and when I'm writing my first chapter is just kind of pretend that I'm not writing the first chapter, that nobody's going to see this. Maybe I'm not even writing a book anymore. I'm just writing for myself. And that helps me to be able to just let the creative, the creativity Flow. So that way I'm not just frozen in fear sitting here thinking, oh my goodness, I have to have, you know, all of these different pieces to make this perfect first chapter and my first sentence has to be perfect and it all has to be amazing. And then you just, you're never going to write it. So creativity isn't going to flow if you are frozen in fear. So sit down at your desk, just write for you, forget about all the things that you are supposed to do. You can go back and edit it. You can go back and add these things that you're supposed to have in there if you didn't put them in. And one thing that I find is that when I kind of forget about all the things that I've learned and all the things that I'm supposed to do, that's when the chapter just flows. It's so much easier to write. And actually, just kind of unconsciously, I have put those things in there. So those were the rest of the tips that I have for writing your first chapter. If you missed my other video, I will leave a link. And it is just a really quick um, five minute video. So you definitely have time to watch it. Don't pretend you don't, you better click it. <laughs> See you guys later.